Episode 60, let's do it, baby. This was really good, though. You stay here, good girl. <laughs> you like that? <laughs> oh, it looks like I'm bringing back the shop some lunch. Man, from sun up to sundown, I've been doing hoodies. Jesus. Hey guys, what is up? It is your least favorite moto vlogger, Brian636 here, coming live from episode 60 of Hood Eats. 60 episodes, man. So I thought long and hard about this, and you guys put it down in the comments of what we should do special for episode 60, and the top voted comment on the last episode was a 60 minute long episode. Now, could I spend 60 minutes talking about one neighborhood? Absolutely. But I figured I should do three different neighborhoods, 20 minutes or so a piece for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. For breakfast, we're heading all the way up to the north side to the neighborhood of Lakeview on the 2013 ZX6R. For lunch, we're heading to the far west side on the 2020 Honda Grom to the neighborhood of Austin. And for dinner, we are heading down to the south side to the neighborhood of Chatham on the 2003 ZX636. My blood, my baby, cannot wait to ride it. Cannot wait to ride all these things. Do not just stick around for the first neighborhood or the second neighborhood, because all three of these neighborhoods are in completely different sections of the city. And I really do want to highlight how different these neighborhoods really are and why they are all part of Chicago and what makes them all great and unique in their own ways. Because believe it or not, the far north side is a whole lot different than the west side and the west side is way different than the south side. And a lot of these neighborhoods and these restaurants are still there to this day for a reason. Episode 60, three bikes, three neighborhoods, three restaurants. Let's do it. All right, guys, so we are on Diversity and Ashland, right on the border of Lincoln Park and Lakeview. And for breakfast, I wanted to ride the 2013 636 just because I haven't shown this bike in such a long time, and it really did just fit the bill for breakfast. I built this bike almost three years ago now, and I always forget how much I love riding it every time I get on it because it is an absolute blast. But for breakfast, we are starting out in Lakeview, and Lakeview has so much stuff to offer. I cannot believe I've never been there on a Hood Eats. So let's go find a coffee and maybe a donut up in Lakeview, and I'll tell you guys a little bit about it. As it is home to one of our major league baseball teams the cubbies some beautiful sites along the lakefront and the u.s's first nationally recognized gay neighborhood let's go get breakfast <laughs> this thing is so loud <laughs> A lot of construction going on. Ashland has to be like one of the most congested streets in Chicago. Every time I come up to the north side, Ashland is normally one of like the main strips that you travel and it's always just absolutely packed. And don't even think about coming down to Ashland when the Cubs are playing. Lane split, lane split. Turn down that idle a little bit since we're not circle wheeling right now. <laughs> Keep it at like three. I like to keep this one at like three, a little below three. And then for circle wheelies, like right at 3,500, this motor pulls really, really, really hard, especially for, for a lot of stuff, you know, circles. Any type of no-hander, any type of foot brake work where you want to take your hand off the gas, this 13 just pulls so much harder than the 0304. Let's see if the scooter will wave back. Nope. <laughs> Look at the L. That's awesome, man. I think that's the red line. It could be the brown line, though. The L's have been here in Chicago for over 100 years now, and they call it the L because it's the elevated train, so the L. When Chicago started to expand west and north and south of downtown, and streets kept being more and more cluttered with people, the city thought, what a great way to alleviate traffic and not add to the already congested streets, but to elevate the train above them. And as you can see by the L's graph nowadays, it covers most of Chicago, and it even touches out to some of the near north and west suburbs of Chicago. It doesn't go to Chicago's full length south yet. That's part of an initiative program that Lori Lightfoot is really trying to get done before she leaves office. She wants the red line to expand all the way down to 130th, because right now it stops at 95th. And it pretty much cuts out a lot of far south side neighborhoods like uh, Roseland, West Pullman, stuff like that. Look at some of these Greystones, man, and Lakeview. He's got to be like million, multi-million dollar homes now. The Bud Light truck is still out for deliveries over here in Boys Town, people. Lots of taverns and small businesses here. And here we go, man. Addison and Clark. Go Cubs, go. Go Cubs, go. Hey Chicago, what do you say? The Cubs are gonna win today. 
Look at that. I cannot believe I haven't been to Wrigley Field for Hood Eats, bro. You gotta get a quick picture of the beauty out front of Wrigley. Addison and Clark, man. This is like Party District Central Station when the Cubs are playing, man. I was actually here in 2016 when they won the World Series. It was a really cool place to be. Absolutely jam-packed. How's it going? Shoot you down to some of these infamous, infamous bars. So yeah, that's Wrigley Field, literally right in the heart of the north side here. We have Sluggers. This is like, <laughs> I can't even tell you the amount of fun and fun times I've had in there. They have a bunch of like games that you can play upstairs and just a huge bar. As you can expect from pretty much any professional baseball team to have. But I think the Cubs are just a little bit different. They have a special, special place in a lot of Chicago people's heart, especially because they are on such a long losing streak. And uh, in 2016, they broke that, that streak. It's just crazy. Got Happy Camper there. Got Old Crow there. My old roommate used to work there. They hired a lot of veterans to work security there. Sports World. You can come over here and get a $200 jersey, $300 jersey. And over here on our right, I always forget this is a technically a dealer in Chicago. Wrigley Harley, man. One of the only dealers in Chicago land that we haven't really done a stunt show for or much of anything for. I haven't even stopped in, but it's here and it's literally right across the street from uh, Wrigley Field. Another really, really, really unique part of Chicago and Wrigleyville is if you look up, these are all rooftop bleachers, man. So all these three, four flat gray stones have bleachers up on the top and a lot of diehard fans uh, get season tickets for these because it's a really, really, really good view of the stadium here to your left. Harry Gary. Let me hear you. A one, a two, a three. Take me out to the ball game. Just a lot of Chicago legends and just legacy up here in Lakeview, especially in the Wrigleyville section. I'm kind of flabbergasted. It's taken me 60 episodes to get up here and cover this neighborhood, but it is a super important piece of Chicago. We only have two MLB teams here. One on the north side, of course, the Chicago Cubs, and one on the south side, the Sox. They're on 35th and the Dan Ryan. <laughs> And it's a real make or break question for a lot of sports fans of who are you a fan of, the Cubs or the Sox, you know, the north side or the south side. The red line, this runs directly north and south. I used to hop on that when I would go to college up here. Just super, super congested streets up here. Up, oh, street sanitation. Hope you moved your car, people, or else you're getting towed. They gotta sweep the streets. Look at that, they got their own little Lakeview gardening pots, huh? And now, once we get to Halstead here, I think you can see by the sidewalks where we've entered. Halstead Street is home to a lot of the gay bars around the north side. So much so that Boys Town became officially incorporated as part of this neighborhood and a nationally recognized gay neighborhood. So, as you can see, you have a lot of LGBTQ flags on the sidewalks. If you're ever in Chicago and, you know, you swing that way or you're a guy and you want some free drinks, Maybe come up to, to Boys Town. I don't know. See if we can go find some. The cell block. Now right here, these are called the legacy poles. And this is another kind of interesting part of Lakeview. This was part of Rahm Emanuel's last doing when he was in office. There's 25 of these poles all throughout Halstead Street and down this strip. And it pretty much highlights notable LGBTQ people from within the US and tells their story. So you can walk down Halstead and read about famous gay people. You got a little bike shop. How basic would I be if I came all the way up to Boys Town for breakfast and I went to IHOP? <laughs> Guys, we came all the way up here, and today I'm going to IHOP. You know what else I just realized? I haven't wheelied in this vlog. Try to let one sink. <laughs> Wake the f up! What's up? Huh? You like that one? <laughs> he said that was a good one. UPS, if you could only stop losing my packages as much as you like my wheelies, that would be great. Oh, you got a ticket. Now, what would Hood Eats be without a little bit of history and statistics? As this is where one of the original army bases that was built here in Chicago while it was still developing was. As this neighborhood began to grow and flourish, Swedish, Greek, and Irish immigrants began settling up here. So much so that it became one of Chicago's most populated areas and still is to this day. It is actually Chicago's second biggest 
neighborhood by population with just over 100,000 people living in the neighborhood alone. That's bigger than a lot of US cities, people. What the hell? <laughs> I gotta stop in here and do some shopping, people. So that's actually what I'm feeling for Friday night. And I think I'm feeling that one. Yeah, that one for that late night rave on Saturday night. What do you think, baby? I think I look pretty good on there. I like the guy with the, the nipple kiss me's. That's pretty wild. That's some Marine Corps shit if I've ever seen it. Everyone always gives Marines shit about being gay. <laughs> so what, we're a little touchy-feely. Definitely wild how much rainbow sidewalks are down here. Really famous part of uh, Chicago, man. Whoa. Construction here. The Playground Theater. I can't believe I'm going out for breakfast, lunch, and dinner all in this 60 minute long episode, man. I'm gonna be dead by the end of the day. The stuff I do for you guys, I'll tell you what. You got the Chicago, American, and Gay Pride flag all above the Lucky Horse Lounge. Oh, and this is where the Blue Man Group plays. I totally forgot that's in Lakeview too. The Briar Street Theater, yes. The Blue Man Group literally has residency here in Lakeview. God, there's so much stuff in Lakeview. Now, even though Lakeview has one of the largest populations in Chicago, the second largest, uh, biggest population in Chicago, it is one of Chicago's safest. So much so that it's kind of hard for me to find like a notable shooting or something like that, um, especially that I can recall off the top of my memory here in Lakeview. So in 2022, while neighborhoods with similar size like Austin or Roseland or Englewood, some of these bigger population neighborhoods had hundreds of hundreds of shootings. Lakeview had four people get shot and two homicides. So I'm telling you, with a population as big as this in a city like Chicago, this neighborhood is a really, really, really weird one. It stands out in the fact that it is so close to downtown, so big in size and population, and it is still so peaceful. The racial makeup of this neighborhood is 77% white, 4% Asian, 6% African American, and 8% Hispanic. Kill her? All right, good girl, you stay here, okay? You stay. Hello. Could I have like a vanilla frappe type of thing? Do you guys have that? Okay. Okay, I'll do, I'll do that, yeah. I guess I'll have one of these too. Thank you. 11 degrees north. That's probably cause Clark runs on an 11 degree north angle. That is true Chicago North Side, just little coffee shops like this. Cute little names like 11 Degrees North. Hi. Coffee standard issue, not bad. This is really good though, really freaking good. Thank you. Are you guys called 11 Degree North because of Clark? Why, are you, why is the name 11 Degrees North? Really? Oh, it's a Venezuelan thing? Oh, my guess is that it was Clark Street that it ran like 11 degrees or something, but. Really? Okay, cool. Cool. Have a good day. I was totally, totally wrong. She said no. It's something to do with the Venezuelan owner's history. I don't know what that even means, but okay. 11 degrees north. Cool. I got a coffee and a little donut. That way I got room for a big lunch and a big dinner on the west and the south side of Chicago. I really do want you guys to, to try to keep in mind what we're seeing up here on the north side and how nice it is and peaceful because where we're going next, could not say the same for. That coffee got me hype! Big and Little's restaurant. Just so many small little restaurants and businesses and bars and it's just, a, it's definitely a crazy difference as we continue to, to go out throughout Chicago. Some of the artwork out here too. Jeez. This is such a little busy intersection here at Belmont and Ashland, man. There's like four or five 
I think, no, 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 no. There is six different intersections. Because you have Lincoln Ave running at the weird degree. You have Belmont and Ashland. So you have six streets all converging together on this intersection. There's a weird one. A lot of accidents up here. Dude, I think the tail on this is loose or something. When I went to jump, the sub cage is tight, but oh yeah. Yeah, that could be a problem, guys. <laughs> It's loose as fuck. My tail's loose. Stop looking at me, dude. <laughs> so one of my favorite things to do on this bike, like I said, is no-handers. And I'll try to try to rip a no-hander here. I haven't done it in a long time. Like I said, I haven't rode this bike in a long time, so let's see what we got. This is the only 636 I own that has over a 60 tooth on it. I think this has a 62 tooth sprocket in the rear. Matched with that 13 torque, this thing is just nuts. Nuts, nuts, nuts. El Presidente. So I used to live right right there on that block uh marshfield when i went up here to school and this was like the 24-hour restaurant and as you can see it's actually for sale now um i still see people eating in there though but man 24-hour mexican food just i'll tell you I, it's the most mid 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 food you could eat i never once had like a spectacular meal there or something like it was like three out of ten or maybe five out of ten it was like a six out of ten when you were drunk it was just man rough and i ate there plenty of times i give it plenty of chances and just never knocked me out of my socks type of food all right guys as we head down to ashland farther south we leave the lakeview neighborhood i'm jolted up on coffee i'm not too full from that one donut so i do have plenty of room for lunch i am gonna head back to the shop let the gopro charge up clear out the sd card and get this thing ready for lunch and dinner I hope you guys enjoyed Boys Town. I hope you guys enjoyed Wrigleyville and a lot of the different subsections within Lakeview as there is so many and there's just so many different little mini neighborhoods within the neighborhood. I think you can get the vibe of that pretty clearly by uh, by that little bit. But I'm going to go let my GoPro charge up a little bit and uh, get back to you as soon as I'm jumping on. I think I'm going to do the Grom for lunch. As soon as I'm jumping on the Grom, turn this thing back on. Episode 60, let's do it, baby! All right, guys, for lunch, like I said, we are here on the west side in Austin. And this isn't just your typical gas station. This is one of the most active gas stations in the Chicagoland area. I've started a hoodie tier before, and ever since then, there has been multiple shootings here, a couple high-profile homicides, and this gas station continues to get shut down by the city for a couple days after shootings, just because this is such a heavily trafficked area. Madison Street is home to the West Side's open-air drug markets, and a lot of dealers utilize this gas station. The shoes over the power lines like that are pretty notorious for a drug dealing spot and for this one i'm on the 2020 honda grom 125 cc's everyone knows this bike this bike is infamous for a reason and today i'm going to one of the most infamous restaurants in chicago for lunch uncle ramus i cannot believe i have not been here before i thought i needed gas but this thing gets like 200 miles to the gallon so let's go out to lunch in the beautiful neighborhood of austin <laughs> it's not that hard, man. All you do is pop the clutch. You, you think you'd bust your ass? All you do is rev it a little bit and then pop the clutch. That's it. <laughs> About 60. You guys never seen us over here on Mondays when there's like 100 or 200 of us? Yeah. How much do I want for it? Ah, uh, this one ain't for sale. This one's special. No, I can't jump. I can't jump anymore. I gotta be automatic. All right, guys. Be safe out here, huh? See you guys. <laughs> the open air drug market to the west side, man. It's a real thing out here. It is a dangerous ass place to be. Please, whatever you do, people. <laughs> Don't do what I'm doing, okay? Especially if you come here for like lean back or something like that. Think you can just come across everybody like that. It's not a good idea, all right? But let's get into it. Lunch, Austin.
beautiful, beautiful Austin. Right now, we are in South Austin. Now you might be saying, now Brian, why is there subsections to this neighborhood? A lot of the same reasons that Lakeview has subsections, this does as well. This is by mass, not by population, but by mass, Chicago's largest neighborhood. At its peak, in like the 60s and 70s, when this neighborhood was bustling and booming, there was over 125,000 people living here. 125,000 people living here. That's a pretty astronomical number. Now in 1891, the city of Chicago annexed the neighborhood of Austin. This used to accompany all the suburbs around it as well. It used to encompass Cicero and Berwyn to the south, and this was just one ginormous neighborhood. Now when the city of Chicago annexed the neighborhood, those now suburbs split from the neighborhood of Austin. It borders to the south of Roosevelt and it borders to the north of Grand Avenue. To the west is Austin Boulevard and to the east is Cicero Avenue, which we are on right now. So I'm on the border of Garfield Park and Austin. Now historically, Cicero Avenue is one of the most dangerous and deadly roadways in Chicago just because it separates some of Chicago's most deadly neighborhoods from each other. Austin in 2022 was Chicago's second most deadly neighborhood. Where's that puppy? How are you doing, buddy? In 2022, 220 people were shot in this neighborhood, 172 were wounded, and 48 killed. For a neighborhood of this size, with 80,000 residents, it's easy to see why people are moving out of this neighborhood in droves. People moved here in the early 1900s for a lot of the same reasons most immigrants moved to the Chicago neighborhoods. Amazingly beautiful parks like Columbus, the elevated train ran all the way out to Austin Boulevard to bring you into downtown for your industrial work, and the amazing schools that were being built here at this time really made this neighborhood really desirable for Czech, Greek, and Irish immigrants. And even began to move in Italian immigrants in the early 1900s, the south end of this neighborhood that later became known as the island. Now, like I said before, there's four different neighborhoods within this neighborhood. There's Galewood to the north, there's the island to the south part of Austin, which is separated by the 290 Eisenhower Expressway, and then there's north and south Austin. Now, north and south Austin is where most of the population lies within this neighborhood, and to be honest, it's also where a lot of the violence lies as well. Now some blocks in this neighborhood truly are peaceful, beautiful, and well kept, while other blocks in this neighborhood are completely war-torn. And it really does depend on what gang controls that block in Austin. And it is crazy to see how it really is just block by block by block basis. As truly some cliques keep their block immaculate and they're nice and old people live on it and are really strict with some of this block club enforcements, you know, that enforce things like no gambling, no car washing, no loitering, no drug dealing, a lot of this stuff. Here's an old block sign. See, no loitering, drug dealing, gambling, dice, alcohol drinking, playing loud music, car repairing, playing ball in front of property absolutely no so some of these block clubs were put in place years and years ago and some blocks really do honor them while other blocks have just let the whole thing go to the wind stoppy beep, beep. Beep. <laughs> I haven't rolled a stoppy on this thing in forever this front brakes suck it feels so weird riding the Grom on a day that is not Monday like it just feels weird. This is an all too common sight in Austin too that I've noticed over the years. Abandoned churches, like it just is, I feel like that adds so much to the neighborhood that people will never really understand, but religion and the family unit, I feel like is one of the number one deciding factors of if a neighborhood is violent, has drug problems, stuff like that. If it has jobs, it's truly religion. If families are intact and people are respecting God and the commandments and, and all this stuff, a lot of times that goes hand in hand with crime and drug use and, and some of the desperate situations that some of Chicago's most violent neighborhoods are really lacking. That's just something I've noticed over the years. If, if the churches are in place and the families are in place and there's a lot of jobs there and I feel like it's just a big frickin' cycle, you know what I mean? And one is there without the other and it just is, it is what it is. I think I have the right to speak on that after, you know, 60 plus episodes of doing this stuff. That's just kind of what I've observed. Maybe it's related, maybe it's not, but that's what I think.
All right, guys, I am so sorry to interrupt episode 60, but today we finally have a sponsor for the channel, and it is a very fitting one for Hood Eats. As a lot of you guys know, violent crime here in the city of Chicago and other major cities in the Midwest and just around the country have been seeing a rise in violent crime. A lot of riders that we ride with have been shot. A lot of us have been shot at, and this is something that I take very seriously. While I'm riding, I like to move around a lot and get on the bike, off the bike, and I don't want anything cumbersome on me. So in addition to having my medical supplies, I like to ride with soft armor from Bullet Safe. This soft armor is only about three pounds and it stops all handgun rounds. So your 380s, your nine millimeters, your 45s, your 22s, your 32 specials, anything like that is stopped with this jacket. Now, 92% of the shootings in Chicago do happen with handgun rounds and this does protect your most vital organ. It's slick enough that it hides under any t-shirt or jacket and it's light enough and not bulky enough that you can jump around in your motorcycle and still stunt ride and live a normal life with it. So once again, shout out to Bullet Safe for sponsoring this video. I really do appreciate it and I know you guys will as well. If this is something that interests you or something that you might consider, check out that link below. They're very affordable and they're absolutely something that I would recommend for you riders. Let's get back to Hood Eats episode 60. Now another really cool piece of history in this neighborhood lays right behind this fence and I covered this the one time I did this neighborhood uh, for Hood Eats, I don't know, like two years ago. And that is what lays behind that fence is where my grandma and my great aunt both grew up in, in the 60s. My great aunt was a school teacher at the time and during the King riots in 1968, my great grandpa decided to move them out of the neighborhood just because it was so violent and a lot of the buildings were burned down here and it just wasn't a nice place to be right here off Laverne. Now compared to other neighborhoods that rank in that top 10 most deadly neighborhoods list that Hey Jackass puts out every year, I would have to say Austin still has the most amount of jobs out of all those neighborhoods. So I don't think jobs are really the factor here. What I do want to point to is that the lucrative drug trade that exists on Chicago's farthest west side neighborhood is truly the reason that this has been such a fought after neighborhood for the past 20 something years, ever since the heroin epidemic really became a thing. And I don't think I can emphasize this enough. We've lost almost one kid a year from my graduating class from overdose, whether that's uh, painkillers, whether that's heroin, whether that's fentanyl, it doesn't really matter. And now, what does this have to do with Austin and its violence, you might ask? Well, with it being the border of Chicago and all the western suburbs, which is really where Chicago expanded to when we ran out of room, kids from those suburbs come right here to the border of Chicago. They want to barely be in it just to get their drug, because this is where the cheapest prices are, this is where there is open air drug markets, and this is where some of those lax Cook County laws come into play. If you guys remember during my 2020 riot coverage, this was one of the liquor stores that I interviewed the store owner about. So Chicago Fire Department was here within about 10 minutes. And this was this was kind of one of the main hubs for food and groceries around here too. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, right now what? And a lot of people down in the comments were saying, oh no, these are gonna come back, these businesses will be back, they'll be back in the neighborhood, they have insurance, da 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 da. Well here we are, three years later. And that business owner and this convenience store has not come back and it is still having some of the same fire damage that we observed back in 2020. Really sad to see. So I don't want to say that as like a aha, I told you, but I did tell you, I don't think a lot of businesses are going to recover from this. And to be honest, a lot of the businesses out in these neighborhoods, they never did. They never did recover. So SRT, baby. So truly, Austin's sole reason for being as violent as it has been the past 20 years is directly, directly to blame on the lucrative drug trade that exists here. And it really doesn't have anything to do with the neighborhood or, or anything like that. I think it really can get chopped up to where it is. It's kind of just a product of, of where it was placed. Or it is the border neighborhood between Chicago and the suburbs. And with the heroin and fentanyl and painkiller and all this stuff mixed together, the drug trade just by default is gonna boom in the closest neighborhood to the border. 290's got the nickname of the heroin highway over the years because there's always groups of teenagers coming into the city filled with cash and then leaving the city filled with heroin or their drug of choice. Really is sad. But Austin is still today one of the most amazing neighborhoods that Chicago has to offer. We have amazing food spots. We got amazing motorcycle shops like Misguided there. We got cool trails like this. Literal mini bike trails back here across from the CTA bus line. I'm like hitting my rear set. Those rocks so low. Oh no. I'm not on the Suron. <laughs> the Suron will be eating this trail for dinner. The Grom, not so much.
for the first time we've hit trails on Hood Eats. Just launch it at this, whoo, launch it at those wood poles. Whoa. <laughs> Fun little trails back there. Damn. Oh, donk right there. <laughs> Whoa, I brought some grass with me. I am starving, man. I'm so excited for Uncle Raymond. I think they call it the G-Pan. That's what you got to get over there. Welcome to the Fulton Street Strawberry Patch. I like that. There was a huge, huge initiative over the past couple mayors to really start turning a lot of these abandoned lots where homes used to stand in the community garden. I think it is a really good idea too. Here we go, man. Stolen Kia. You can always tell a Kia has been stolen um, when that back window's taped up like that. Super common sight over here. Super, super common sight. I don't even want to stop at the cars and show you guys what I'm talking about just because a lot of times people that'll steal a car, they don't really care about a YouTuber. <laughs> but I'm sure you guys have heard of the Kia boys and you can literally steal one of the cars with just a simple USB drive. Not hard to figure out how to do it. Whole warehouse caught on fire, man. Look at this. This whole warehouse was burned down last year. I remember seeing it on the news. I haven't been here since. Crazy, man. It's crazy how we were just in Lakeview for breakfast up on the north side and this is what some of the neighborhoods over here on the west side look like. They look like war-torn, you know, neighborhoods in a, you know, third world country. And it is really sad to see the vast difference on, you know, block to block, neighborhood to neighborhood. Pretty wild, man. U.S. Spices Mill. Man, do I smell the spice. It's getting in my damn nose. Jesus, Lord have mercy, dude. Dude, you had a bad day. Look at the cars around here. Just, it literally always looks like a f demolition derby happened like the night before. Cars just absolutely demolished. Escalade caught on fire. <laughs> Guy just looks at me and shakes his head. A lot, a lot, a lot of abandoned lots, man. This is like the floor of a building. Used to be, I should say. You can see the tile. More just burned down and up buildings. Enough playing around talking about us. Let's go show you what makes this neighborhood so freaking special. It's the people, it's the food, it's the history, it's all of it, man. It's so cool. Going down the main strip here on Madison. Smoke just billing out of the barbecue joint, man. Joe's Barbecue, I ate there one time. It was phenomenal. Phenomenal. But for every one of those, there's always a huge, huge swath of just emptiness where industrial buildings once stood. If you guys want to look in this uh, ignition on this Kia, the uh, key fob has been busted out of it. I'm going to zoom in on that. I'm telling you, Kias and Hyundais, every single one of them, stolen, man. I don't even get close to them. Either that's stolen right now or it was recently recovered because the ignition out of it is just busted straight out. Damn, look at that. Laramie and Madison where someone just rammed into the fence. <laughs> this auto zone has so many mechanics, like mobile mechanics that work on the outside of it. <laughs> look at the back of this freaking toe. As little Dick would say, slide out west just for Uncle Ramus. Sounds dumb and the strangest. In the trenches, I feel the safest. I can't believe we haven't eaten at Uncle Ramus for Hood Eats yet, man. That's crazy. What were you asking if it's electric? You didn't hear it bouncing off the rev limiter? <laughs> uh, like 3,300. Yeah, they go for right around there. Sometimes they're a little bit more in the springtime. Bought it online. Yeah, they got electric ones like this, yeah. Yep. No, 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 no. Electric doesn't have the one bum 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 bum, you know, and you got to shift on this. So you're you're with Safe Passage. So what do you guys do exactly? Okay. So Central is part of the Safe Passage, right? Hey, what's up, dude? You do? You want to rub it? Hey. No, you'll be good. Go ahead, all you gotta do is twist it a little bit. All the way. 
Hey! <laughs> <laughs> bye bye. Bye man. <laughs> oh, that cool. It was cool, right? You'll get one when you're older. I'm gonna go grab something from Uncle Ramus. What's up, man? What do you got? Little poppets? You got the pop things? Is that what that is? Pop one. <laughs> little snappers. Can I try one? I just want to try one. I haven't done one since I was like, I don't know, six years old. <laughs> you want to rev it? Yeah, go ahead. It's loud, right? Yeah. All right, brother. Kids love the Grom. And here we are, Uncle Ramus. No, it's not new. It's it's like three years old. Uh, about 60. They just they got done remodeling this place, right? Ooh. The G-Pan. That's what everyone gets. Hey there, could I do a G-Pan? A G-Pan? Mixed. No, thank you. I'll just have... Uh, a uh, grape crush, that's all. Do you guys got like mild sauce? Can I have a side of that too? Thank you. Thank you. Right. <laughs> Cook County Sheriff's over there just watching. There he is. Huh? Are we gonna do some wheelies? Not when that guy's here. That guy. Oh man. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Is this me? Thank you. Have a good day. All right, guys, the hype is real. The hype is real. This is that special. This sauce, the fried chicken, it's hard. God, saucy chicken, man. Saucy right. fried chicken. This is, man, I don't want to say the, but it's up there. Top five, top five best. Hood Eats, man. This is, this is worth the drive. Central and Madison, you're on the west side out here in Austin. This is it. This is worth it. Oh, it looks like I'm bringing back the shops and launch. Whoa, 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 whoa. This is good, good, man. Try a piece, it's that good. Ooh, man, it looks like it's gonna rain now. Breakfast was cold, lunch was hot. Now this, huh? We got a long way down to Chatham, guys, and the restaurant that I was supposed to go to is not answering their phone, so we're gonna have to wing this one. We're gonna have to wing it. Kinda like what we had for lunch. We're winging it. Let old girl warm up. Talk about eating like crap, man. Three meals? Come on. All takeout? Ugh. I like my home cooked meals. Hood Eats, episode 60. Let's go. South side. Last side of the city. If you look at Chicago, I mean, there is an east side, technically, like a southeast side. That's when people will say the east side. But to be honest, the east side is the freaking lake. So there's three sides of the city the north, the west, the south. All very different sides. <laughs> as hell dude oh girl feels good i haven't rode you in such a long time baby downtown man so we're coming from the west side now heading east on the eisenhower and we're gonna jump on the infamous dan ryan expressway man during rush hour too not gonna be fun the only thing that it would make this less fun is if those clouds that rain that's chasing us 
uh, beats us to the south side. Here comes that heavy rain on again. If we're stuck in rush hour traffic and it's pouring, that would not be fun, people. <laughs> Get cold! <laughs> Thank you. Jesus. <laughs> Almost pulled out in front of me. Now, if you're from Chicago, you know the move I'm about to do. Everyone's going south. Everyone's going on the Dan Ryan, especially from the Eisenhower. Everyone's going south. So there's the line. We're not going to wait in that line, though. Nope. 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 Start. 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 Up. To the right. <laughs> That guy was loving it. The Ford Ranger. Indiana. The Ryan Expressway, 9094, baby. So the Dan Ryan is Chicago's longest expressway. It runs all the way from downtown all the way down to 95th. 95th, it does the split into the Bishop Ford. And 95th, it splits to 94 and then 57. So 95th, all the way to downtown, the Dan Ryan runs. And at some points, it can be up to like eight, 10 lanes wide. It's huge. If you look at a map of Chicago, most of the neighborhoods are south of the city. I shouldn't say most, about 50% of the neighborhoods are south of the city. About 25% are to the west and about another 25% are to the north. <laughs> Gotta straighten these bars when I get home, man. They're a little crooked. Damn, look at the M3, baby. That thing's sick. Whoa! I think I just got wet there, man. Hopefully I'm not smudging up the camera too much. So the Dan Ryan has this. This is another thing no other highway does. We have the express and the local lane. Express, exactly what it sounds like. You're blocked off from the local lanes until a certain exit and then, you know, vice versa with the local as well. Oh, we gotta go all the way down to Chatham, man. That's down in the 70s. I think the border of Chatham is 79th. Lane splitting traffic. Kind of nerve-wracking. Well, I'm on the Dan Ryan. It would be uh, very who of me to talk about those. If you see them on pretty much every single overpass on the Dan Ryan. Those are called LPRs, license plate reader. The Illinois State Police had a huge initiative the past two, three years to put these up at every single overpass on the Dan Ryan, basically every single one, to have complete coverage of the Dan Ryan, to not only hunt down uh, some of the carjackers, but more so to get some of the shooters that literally patrol the Dan Ryan. There was over 100 expressway shootings in Chicago last year, and it really has been Illinois State Police's biggest concern. I felt like every day last summer, we would see the Dan Ryan's close, the Dan Ryan's close, the Dan Ryan's close, the Eisenhower's close, but mostly the Dan Ryan, this freeway right here, uh, due to shooting. Because whenever there is a shooting on the expressway, you got to think of what a headache that is. They have to close down, especially if there's a death investigation, they have to close down all the lanes, whether that is local or express lanes, to do this investigation. And I know you guys are seeing how much I've been lane splitting already and not really going very fast. Imagine the uh, regular person on their commute. You're, you just doubled, tripled your time to get home. It's a huge convenience. And on top of that, no one likes getting shot and no one likes uh, the, the shootings in our city. So Illinois State Police, that was their big initiative the past couple of years and sure as hell, they are everywhere, license plate readers. They really help to track down a lot of the Hyundais and Kias that are getting stolen too, and um, yeah, they're an effective tool. Oh no, dude, I feel the storm blowing in. Like, I literally feel it. Damn, I'm gonna be riding out a thunderstorm on the south side, getting off that damn highway, man. I think it's packed. Turn right here on Garfield Boulevard. Now we're on the border of Back of the Yards in Englewood, and we are going to head south from here. I always think this is probably one of the saddest parts of a neighborhood in, in all of Chicago, because all this used to be residential, and now it's just nothing. It's just leveled earth. But all the sidewalks and streets and everything like that is still there. We're on the very north side of Englewood here. So all the streets and all the alleys and all your stuff's still there. It's just nothing there. Traffic lights in the middle of nowhere, too. Wild. I always slow up, even when I go all the green lights, man, just because people run them. What do you think? Do a wheelie in this thing? Oh, baby. Oh, my baby girl.
You are good? <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> no, I'm good. I got, I got. I'm already late to my date. I got a date. I'm late to. Okay, I'll let her know. I'll let her know. <laughs> what the hell is going on over here? Oh, I love Hood Eats, man. You can't script the shit you see out here in the streets. You just cannot. <laughs> I like that. Love all, trust none. Snake biting the hand. Gratitude. Oh, you're a YouTuber? I'm trying to get on YouTube. Oh, okay. Yeah, me too. He's a drag racing YouTuber. I don't know what the hell he was trying to say. Sounded like he was high as f or something. I doubt his Illinois Department of Transportation. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck that's going to do with anything. <laughs> Damn, dude. Oh, my God. I'm going to get stuck in a thunderstorm down on the south side. I already know. City of Chicago, Englewood Fleet Maintenance Facility. Look at that, they maintain all the fire trucks and ambulances for the city, huh? That's pretty cool. Big city, man. Oh my god. Are you guys seeing this lightning? This is crazy. Really common for them to do two guys up in each car when they do uh, traffic stops out here. Hamilton Park. Turn left. It's gotten so dark so quick. I might have to find a bridge and wait this one out, guys. If it starts pouring, pouring, it hasn't started yet, but I know we're about to get hit hard with this storm. So just like In-N-Out Burger and Whataburger have beef, well, this Harold's Chicken right here on the south side on Vincent has beef with Uncle Remus where we went for lunch. <laughs> It's a big heated argument, you know, south side versus west side, who's got the better chicken, Harold's or Uncle Remus, and I've had them both, they're both really good in their own ways, I don't know if I'm going to say it, I'm going to say it, I think Uncle Remus takes the cake, not saying Harold's is not just like phenomenal, but Uncle Remus is like, man, you bite in the chicken, you know it's something special, not saying Harold's ain't, but man. Uncle Remus. I wish you were my uncle. I'd probably be 400 pounds. 76. A lot of abandoned lots down here too, man. J just the entire stretch of, of Englewood and Auburn Gresham and the beginning of Chatham here. This is it right here on 79. Really does have a ridiculous amount of vacant property, especially for, you know, the U.S.'s third biggest city. You know, just think of the millions, billions of dollars lost by the city from tax revenue. It's not just crime to blame. It's high taxes to, to blame. It's politics. It's bad business. It's it's just a whole lot of host of reasons for this. I'm just going to leave that at that, though. Just billions of dollars of, of taxable income just left vacant all over the city, which is nuts to me, especially as a business owner. Yeah, look at that back there, and then look at that. I am running away from this, man, as fast as I can. I might never be able to outrun it, though. Holy shit. Jeez. Karen Cole is missing. That is so sad, man. That missing girl literally just painted on the side of a wall. Oh. All right, guys. So as we enter the neighborhood of Chatham, one of Chicago's 77 beautiful neighborhoods, let me tell you a little bit about it. Chatham, just like a lot of other Chicago neighborhoods, was annexed by the city in the late 1800s. This community area was home to a couple quiet farms and had marshes to the south end that flooded from Lake Michigan quite often. Early immigrants began to settle here as neighborhoods like Grand Crossing right to the north of it offered railroad jobs and a lot of industrial work began popping up around Lake Michigan and a lot of these canals. However, the 60s and 70s began to bring a lot of blight to these neighborhoods. We saw a lot of white business owners began to move their businesses to the south suburbs like Evergreen Park and neighborhoods like Beverly as high power gangs like the Gangster Disciples began to take over a lot of these south side neighborhoods like Englewood, Grand Crossing, South Shore, Chatham, and it really just kept going from there. Now Chatham is in a really weird predicament because the south end of Chatham is an extremely good 
shape and a lot of the black just like how we talked about over on the west side have black clubs without even knowing they really have black clubs like there's just some very well taken care of middle class african-american blocks now why do i say african-american because this is one of chicago's most densely populated african-american neighborhoods hosting 98.1 percent african-americans one percent white and 1% other. It is truly one of Chicago's most densely populated black neighborhoods. Now, I've done another Hood Eats here before. I'm pretty sure you guys remember it with Tippin' Back. We ate right there at Tony's Phillies and Steak. And then on another episode of Hood Eats, we were here when CFD put out this burning fire. There was a whole building that, that burned down to the ground right there. And we were on our supermoto. We got to watch it. I'll link that video right up there. Now, as white business owners did continue to leave this neighborhood, so did the job. And the city started to emplace some of the low-income housing down here. As the mega projects in Chicago got torn down. A lot of the low income two, three, four flat units did not. Here comes that rain. And Chatham is definitely one of those neighborhoods that a lot of blockbusting happened on. And I, it's really sad to say, but both white homeowners and incoming blacks both got screwed over big time by the real estate agents that did this to these neighborhoods. They came to white homeowners and told them that their neighborhood is changing and their home isn't going to be worth crap, so you better take this dollar amount while you still can, which, you know, ridiculously undersold them on their houses, took advantage of their fear and a lot of the same old story, and then upsold the incoming African Americans as this is an amazing neighborhood and, you know, this is something you want to take advantage of, and it ended up getting both sides screwed over and you pitted two races against each other. It's just, it's just a terrible story, but it's it's too common what happened, especially down here in these South Side neighborhoods. And I know I've talked about it before on my hoodies, but it, it's just a sad thing. Man, it's starting to get slick. This is the first time it's rained for a long time out here in Chicago. Just massive empty lots out here too with just broken down cars in them. Oh, it's really starting to rain, fellas. Whoa, God, is it slick. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. Too slick to be goofing. We're almost at the restaurant, too. It's this barbecue place up here on 83rd. Oh, man, dude. It's about to start literally just pouring. Let's see if we can find a covered spot for our bike. I don't know. Yeah, I guess I can sneak it right there. Oh, and I'm almost out of gas. Great. Thank God we made it here. Holy crap. Excuse me, guys. I gotta move these. Baby cannot get wet. <laughs> Watch out, rat trap. Damn, this thing's got some dead rats in it. That's heavy. <laughs> Excuse me. Pardon me. All right, our baby's out of the rain. And we made it to our restaurant. We're all safe. All right, you stay here, good girl. I think that was the first time it's like started pouring like this during one of these. Thank God I'm in my misguided windbreaker. You guys know where to find those at already. That's old news. That's old news. I've been told you that. So far away from home. The Hyundai with no plate, that's a good look. I like that. What do we got? Uncle John's barbecue, huh? Hey, how are you? I'm wet. I ain't got no cash. I'm just trying to wait out the rain. A pair of stretch pants? Oh, I'm sorry. I mean, it's like 75 degrees out, right? Holy crap, that's a big ass donut. I'll probably get a sandwich. I'm filling a sandwich. Hoagie steaks. Yeah, I think it's fake meat. It's fake meat. You know at, at Burger King how they have the Impossible Whopper? It's fake meat. It tastes a little different depending on what it is. Could I have a regular steak? Yeah. Sweet. You guys got water or something like that? Okay. 49. I wasn't I wasn't planning on riding in the rain, but the rain started when I was riding. You should have seen the Dan Ryan. Stand still traffic. Pouring rain. Thunder striking in the middle of the highway.
Now this reminds me of the sandwich that we got down at Taurus's in Roseland. Um, more like a steak and cheese type of Philly. Really thinly chopped. Looks good. Tastes good. I'm still full from lunch, but there's gonna be a bomb. Very good. Very good steak sandwich. Yeah, it was really good. Very good. Yeah, I'm recording. Yeah. Man, what's up? Where are we with, man? I'm on a 636 right now. Kawasaki. I do food reviews all over Chicago and put it on YouTube. Uh, about 15 years since I was a kid. Hey, I'm trying, man. I'm gonna try. So now the storm went east, east over the lake, and now the west on the way home is looking pretty clear. That's a good thing. Old Cottage Grove, man. It's a pretty big strip that runs through a lot of the south side neighborhoods. A lot, a lot of the south side neighborhoods. The hookup, cell phones and clothing. All right, Dad Hoagie Shop. That was actually really good. More of a spare of the moment. I was gonna do Uncle John's barbecue, but I ended up at the Hoagie Spot just because that line for the barbecue was so crazy. And I was like, man, I just had chicken for for lunch, so I was just feeling a steak sandwich. Happy I did, man. I'll tell you what. Episode 100, your boy's gonna be 280 pounds. Oh, I'm kidding, guys. You guys keep me young. These stunt rides keep me young. I don't think I can be that fat at these stunt rides. I think my old gunny would come and hunt me down if he found out I was fat too. From the Marines and PT, the fuck out of me. <laughs> You'd be like, oh hell no, Brian. You are not not gonna be a fat body. Let's do it. Let's go grab some gas over at Falcon Fuel. How's it going, man? Man, all the pumps are out of service? How the pump's gonna be out of service and you still got gas? Oh my God. God, Chicago. I swear, God. What are you thinking? It's raining, raining. Oh. Yes. Guys, I don't know if you can hear it in me, but after all three of these meals and just riding all day, your boy is exhausted. I'm exhausted. Episode 60, man. I think you guys understand. This is a lot of work, a lot of riding. A lot of history. A lot, a lot of stuff, man. 77 neighborhoods in the city of Chicago, and I think I've probably done over half at this point, for sure. It's just so much and so many, so much history to cover. It's hard, hard, hard. Chatham is a weird one, so it's in this weird middle ground of, you know, south side middle class south side you know poverty and it's kind of at the border grounds of it this is actually the home to chance the rapper as well oh uh, that's a thing i've i guess left out chance the rapper you know, one of chicago's most notable rappers is from this neighborhood and then of course you know to the north of here it's grand crossing which is home to old block which is obviously home to a lot of chicago rappers anglewood uh, little dirk is from twista is from the neighborhood we did lunch in austin he's from out west and i guess what kind of youtuber would i be if i didn't you know, give you a little bit more of a tour of the neighborhood before I head back. A lot, a lot of apartments and three, four flats. It's really similar to the neighborhood of South Shore. Um, I've done that before. This is the direct neighbor to the west of it. South Shore reminds me of, the, of this as well. The whole apartment building still just boarded up though. I know a landlord's kicking himself into the ass for that. This is the infamous 79th. Here in Chicago, a lot of people just call it the nine. <laughs> alleys are just disgusting alleys down here holy shit. just huge empty open lots so every time i'm riding around especially now on the south side and i'm riding around in more abandoned neighborhoods it really is hard for me to not think about the chicago strangler that i covered last year pretty much the serial killer that's been operating here on the south and west side of chicago and just dumping bodies all in like a abandoned and vacant houses and abandoned and vacant garages and the air is just a dime a dozen like over half the houses down here they're boarded up they're abandoned just nothing is is really taken care of so it's easy for a serial killer to operate and i don't know why that's what i keep thinking when i'm down here is just like man i hope i never ever have to come across that on 81st here we're on the very north end of chatham in the northeast part of chatham i should say i think this rain is finally just about past fellas
hitting a little solo sesh, you know, circle sesh. <laughs> I'm full, I'm tired, I'm wet. Man, from sun up to sundown, I've been doing hoodies. I know I let my batteries charge for about, I don't know, 45 minutes, an hour at the shop, but wow, what a day. Who knew, who would have known that riding around all over the city on all these different bikes would have uh, would have exhausted me the way this really did, but it did. I'll show you guys one of the more beautiful parks here on the south side, Grand Crossing Park. Got a nice little foot track, Lots of basketball courts and a schoolhouse right in the middle of it all. Just a really well taken care of campus. And a lot of people don't see this side of the south side. And they see the abandoned houses, they see all that, but there's still some really nice infrastructure here. The park district still does a really good job taking care of a lot of these parks. I won't say all, but a lot. And uh, here comes that heavy rain on again. <laughs> Just to make sure your boy gets extra wet. Let's go find us a bridge or something, huh? I know, I'm tired too, girl. I'm tired too. Let's wait it out. All right, guys, as I leave the neighborhood of Chatham and this rain still just keeps persisting, I'm gonna wait this out at the bus stop here on 77th and Cottage. Let her rest a little bit. Let me sit down for a little bit. And uh, I know my camera battery is running very low. So I'm gonna wait out the rain, sit here, maybe text a couple other friends. And uh, yeah, I really do appreciate everyone for pushing me to 60 episodes of Hood Eats. For everyone who's a part of the channel, I cannot tell you how much I love and appreciate each and every one of you guys. And I don't think it gets much more appropriate then to end episode 60 in the rain on the south side with my og so if you guys like these videos you know what to do just give them a like it's easy it's free if you guys want to support the channel you have like one more week to get entered into that 2020 honda grom giveaway over on my patreon and if you're new here subscribe it's the easiest way to support me leave down in the comments of what you guys thought of lakeview austin and now chatham and some of the areas within them obviously you know south austin's a lot different than boys town and i didn't realize that the hoagies on the south side look so much like some of the sandwiches up on the north side it's you know let, let me know down in the comments below on what you thought of the videos and let me know what your favorite episode of hood eats has been so far this is your least favorite moto vlogger signing out telling y'all to respect life put the guns down and i'm out of here love y'all